Happy Hour. Happy Hour. And now for something completely different. And now for something completely different. What's up? This is Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, and I am here at the chill room of Pinellas Park, thanks to Frank the Kava OG for allowing us to record here. And I've known this guy for about a year and a half now, and we've traveled at many different Kava bars across the Bay Area to hang out. I'm here with Richard. What's happening, man? Hey, Hoppy. How's it going? Thanks Good. for having me here today. Really appreciate it. And how do you say your last name? My last name Solarzano. That is a good last name. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. It's uh, It's been both a blessing and a curse, I can tell you that. So your whole life, you've worked at uh, corporate jobs. And, yeah. And uh, you got a lot of exciting things happening where it's a lot less corporate. But um, I know you said to me off air one time that it paid your bills and helped feed your family. What was it like? What's it been like doing uh, corporate jobs pretty much your whole life? Yeah, uh, this is a great question. It's uh, it's been a mixed bag for sure. I mean, I've learned a lot. I've I've gotten a lot of skills. It's it's really helped me raise my family and it's fed my kids and and all that good stuff. But you know, I'm getting to the t- point in my life. I'm I'm ready for what's next, and uh, I'm very very passionate about kava and kratom. It's something that um, I have believed in for quite some time now, and uh, I'm really kind of moving my my business model into that area. So uh, we'll get to Kava and Kratom in a second because there's plenty that needs to be defended. And I don't even like using the word defended because I feel like it implies there's something wrong with it. But first, I want the audience to get to know you and that. So how long have you been in Tampa Bay and where did you grow up? So I, I was born and raised in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, I moved to Tampa Bay in 2016. Uh, I'd been working all over the country in, in a bunch of different fields. I, I was in the Navy until uh, 2000, and I yeah. got out. Um, worked for places like Intel. Um, went into some medical device stuff. Uh, been doing that for for quite some time, and it's 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 been it's been great. Uh, it's it really has been great, and honestly, I, I really love the Tampa area. I moved all the way from Portland, Oregon, down. And I ended up in Tampa, and I made sorry. many, 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 yeah, it's a, many stops in between. And it's been uh, it's been quite an adventure. And and honestly, I'd have to say the Tampa area is my favorite, uh, you know, across the country so far. You can be honest with me. What is Portland like? Is it is there any part of it that's good? Because from what I've seen, Seattle <laughs> seems cooler than Portland. Yeah, I, you know, I got to be honest. Uh, Portland, I, I was up there, let's say, around 2001, 2002. So it's changed quite a bit since I was up there. Uh, I liked it. I, I really liked the area. The, the Pacific, Pacific Northwest is fantastic. I mean, if you've never been up there, the, the forests and whatnot are just amazing. If you like to hike, those types of things, uh, it's great. Um, but as compared to Seattle, I, I would have to agree. Uh, Seattle's a little bit more of an exciting city. I, I, I've been a professional musician for my for my entire adult life, and I've played, um, you know, in bands both in Portland and Seattle. And uh, Portland has got a good music scene. But honestly, Seattle Seattle's iconic for a reason. It's 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 a really cool place. I know the grunge rock scene comes from Seattle. Was that the type of uh, genre you used? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I graduate. I graduated uh, in '94, so you know, Nirvana. I, the, the whole grunge thing was what I kind of grew up on, and it was kind of a, a trip to Mecca to live up in uh, the Northwest for a while. I don't dislike rock music, but to me, grunge is like my favorite. I'm not big into like the '70s and '80s wild hair. The '90s to me was like the realest rock. I, I, I can't agree more. I, I'm not, you know, I, I do like some older, some older stuff. I'm more into seventies rock, like Led Zeppelin and uh, early rush and that kind of stuff. Um, eighties kind of dropped off for me a little bit, but yeah, nineties when, when, when Nirvana dropped, never mind. That is when, you know, the entire, the entire genre changed. Um, and, and really the, the pendulum swung back to, you know, more, I'm a drummer. So, you know, a lot of the eighties were, you know, uh, um, synthetic drums and things like that. Things just started kind of swinging back. Um, in that grunge era, and uh, it was it was really something that I was I was happy to see for sure. Now, what do you think would have happened if Kurt Cobain never died? Would Nirvana have sold out? Would they have been better than ever? I often think about this a lot, especially with a lot of the people on the Twenty Seven Club. Yeah, I can. I can. It, that's a that's a really interesting question. I got to say, um, you know, though I don't, you know, I, I don't condone suicide or anything like that. 
it would be kind of rough to see Kurt Cobain, you know, in his late forties, you know, kind of chubbed out. I mean, we all yeah. saw, you know, we all saw what happened to Guns N' Roses and things like that, right? <laughs> Neil, right? Yeah, yeah, and 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 Poison and whatnot. So it would be kind of depressing to see that happen to you know somebody like him. But honestly, you know, it, it'd be. It, it would be interesting, um, but I, I got to say, I think that they had peaked, and they probably um, they didn't. And I don't want to say they ended on a good note, but uh, certainly they ended in a way that made them uh, that made them immortal. Quite frankly. Now, what do you think about Foo Fighters? Uh, Foo Fighters, great band. Uh, their drummer, you know, the 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 uh, drummer for Nirvana, uh, is something that. I always thought he was kind of just, you know, a bit basic, but it turns out he is just an amazing songwriter and, uh, he just came out and, and killed it with, uh, with them, with Foo Fighters. So yeah, I think they're a great band. They're, they're also great guys from what I hear. Um, you know, they, they, they bring people up, they have beers with them and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I think they're, I think they're pretty good. Honestly, not Nirvana's caliber, but certainly cool. Now I still drink from time to time, but from about 20 to, 28 29 i used to drink really hard yeah and i wasn't drinking every day but when it was time to go to a party i was pre-gaming before leaving the house having five beers maybe a bottle of wine i drank a lot and there was a time when i lived in cleveland and i don't remember anything of it because i was blackout every time i drank i was just 21 i was working on a big radio show so i was partying all the time now for you you lived in Seattle, which seems like a party town. And I know now that a lot of times it's not everybody that drinks Calvin and Kratom, but it comes from people that are trying to quit drinking. So what was your relationship like with alcohol? That's an outstanding question. In fact, it was what the, the primary driver for me to go to Calvin and Kratom. So uh, I was in the Navy at 20 years old. Uh, military folks, I don't know if you know this, but we tend to drink a lot. Yeah. Um, and I, I got into a really bad problem with alcohol at that time. And I was drinking, I was drinking a ton, a ton at that what time. What are you uh, drinking? Uh, mostly rum. I was, I was more, more of a rum guy. Uh, I really like rum and tequila. Those are, those are my two big tequila, drinks for sure. Tequila, man. That just makes me too confident. <laughs> it totally has a, has an issue with that. But, um, th- you could get into like some really top shelf tequilas. They've got a lot of different grades and it's, um, it's, it's, it was one of my favorites. But, you know, I'm not a huge fan of alcohol. I, I you know, it, it has cost me a lot in my life. Me too. Um, me yeah, too. It's, it really has. And, you know, I drank um, a ton up until about uh, 2017. I was drinking daily and uh, it got to a point where it was just it was just getting to be a problem. And, you know, I was hung over all the time. Yeah. I had issues at work. I mean, things were just not clicking for me, especially as I was getting older. And, uh, you know, one day I was vaping at the time and one day I stopped at a vape store, a vape store and I got, um, they had this Kava and Kratom kind of, um, you know, thing going on. And I said, you know, I'll give it a try. And I, I, I really like Kratom and I started drinking green Kratom and over time as that, you know, went from days to weeks to months, I noticed that just naturally my alcohol consumption started to decrease. I wasn't even trying. And honestly, I've tried a lot of different stuff to get off alcohol. I've tried hypnosis. I've tried AA. I've tried medication. I've tried a, a bunch of stuff and none of it really seemed to take. And the only thing that really worked for me you know, uh, is, is the Kratom. And I just started, and I noticed cause you know, I would drink one of those, you know, those big giant bottles of rum. I don't know. I think it's like a liter or yeah. something like that. Well, I would be drinking one of those like every three days. And as I was drinking Kratom, I just noticed that the bottle was more and more full every time I took a look at it to have a drink. And, and it just happened organically. And I was like, wow, there's really something to this. And then, you know, kind of stretch it down the timeline a little bit. I haven't completely, you know, quit drinking. I mean, I really think that, you know, if you have to stay away from alcohol, it's still controlling your life in just a different way. Yeah. And so I haven't completely quit drinking, but I'll have maybe a glass of wine or two a month, and that's about it. And I have really created him to thank for that. I um, drank, um, you know, the red so low cups? Yeah, so absolutely. I had three cups of margarita mix from Aldi's about three weeks ago, and I felt great. And it was fun. Right. And I was drinking at my house, and a girl came over, and everything was good. But I've noticed when it comes to alcohol, it gives me this. There's two problems with drinking liquid confidence. And then when I get really drunk, I text people and it's not even sliding in DMs. Yeah. I get over lovey where I would text my family and be like, I love you so much. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I get it. And then the, the third thing, the biggest problem. The thing I love about Kratom and Kava is it takes away my appetite where I've lost weight 
since drinking that because I'll eat once or twice a day, but it suppresses my appetite in a healthy way. With alcohol, especially if I'm drinking beer, I if I'm in downtown St. Pete, I want to go to Joey Brooklyn's and eat a whole box of pizza. Right. I want to eat chicken wings. I want to eat Taco Bell. And that, to me, is the worst part is it's empty calories so that when you're drinking it, it, it my appetite, dude, is gross when I'm drunk. You know, I get it. I, I'm the same way. I've had problems with, you know, my weight, you know, for my entire life. And I've, I've lost, you know, I'm, I'm up to about 50 You're pounds really now. Good. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And a lot of that was to do with, with just me not quitting, but absolutely reducing my alcohol consumption about 90%. I mean, there's so many empty calories in alcohol. It's just another of just the, the plethora of reasons that uh, alcohol, I feel, is probably the most dangerous drug uh, available today. So what do you have going on in your life right now? You're a very busy guy. No, no, thank you. Uh, I, uh, I'm working for a company right now. I'm doing some uh, corporate work on the side. But my passion is to, you know, I, I, I was really into the Kava Kratom scene for a long time. I had gone to, I've gone to several, you know, Kava Kratom bars. And I started looking at it and I started thinking about, you know, why not me? I mean, these places are, are doing pretty well. I really believe in the product. I've never believed in a product like this before in my life. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I, I'm getting tired of the corporate world. I'm looking for what's next. And this, you know, it, it kind of dropped in my lap. You know, I, I met my my business partner sitting next to me, Rich. Yeah, Rich, yeah. Uh, he, uh, he and I used to go to um, a, a Kava bar and we just kind of talked about it for a while, talked about it and said, hey, you know what? Maybe we should think about, you know, buying one of these places. And, you know, everybody BSs like that over time. But after, you know, about a year or so of talking about that, we said, you know, let's let's give this a shot. And then we met uh, Justin Durheimer, who's the uh, owner of the Strange Clouds brand. And it's one of the most popular brands, brands in South Florida for uh, Cobb and Kratom. And he was looking into franchising his business. He had not done it yet. So he was looking to do something new. Rich and I were looking to do something new. We kind of sat down, we hashed it all out, and we became the first franchisees for Strange Clouds. So Strange Clouds, just to give you a little bit of background on that, uh, we have three different locations here in the Tampa area. We've got one in Palm Harbor. We've got one in kind of the Pinellas Park area and one in St. Petersburg. The one that Rich and I are opening is going to be Dunedin Clearwater. So, nice. yeah, so it's going to be on 580 and uh, 580 and Belcher in uh, right on that right on the border of Dunedin Clearwater. So right by Countryside Mall across the across 19. And, you know. It's been really, it's been really a journey trying to get this place open. Oh, I've heard. Oh man, yeah, you've definitely heard. We've discussed, you know, several times, but we're still, you know, we're we're making forward progress. We still got a, f a few things to do, but we're kind of aiming for a, a mid July opening right now. But all that being said, you know, I wanted to put my money where my mouth is. I wanted to say, look, I have this huge belief in Kava and Kratom. It's helped me so much, and I've seen my, especially with my veteran friends younger than me dying of alcohol poisoning dying of cirrhosis dying of you know really just slow suicide by alcohol and how many people can we help i mean how many people can we can have an experience like me uh and and really kind of turn away from something that's taking you down a really really bad path that's going to shorten your life by a considerable amount and that's really what uh you know the stars kind of aligned in this way and that's why i'm here today what's up rich how you doing I'm doing good. So um, there have been you're good. We're, there have been um, a lot of haters of Kava and Kratom, and I know you guys have fought a lot of uphill battles when it comes to opening up the shop. What do you want to say to the people that maybe read some lame newspapers article or read something online that's so against Kava and Kratom? Because a lot of people are going to listen to this interview and they're going to Google Kratom, and there's articles from the Mayo Clinic. WebMD, Reddit, there's not one good thing about Kratom online when Kratom's the best thing ever. I think part of it is because a lot of it is the government. The government is is against it, and one of the reasons why is they got all a lot of the big, big pharma companies behind them because yes. they don't want you taking over it. Now, unlike my partner here, I, t I'm, I do Kratom for a completely different reason. One of is because of pain management. And in my case, I was doing Advil and Tylenol and even Oxys whenever I can get a hand, hand, you know, my hands on it. So I do it more for the pain management. To, Green Kratom works wonders for, and Red as well, uh, wonders for pain management. And it's way better than doing pills every single day. Red's so this, very uh, relaxing as well. Yes. 
you just take whichever color you want that meets your needs and green and red both they they do well for pain management it's a completely natural plant and it's a natural alternative to pain management so and it i rarely touch tylenol and ibuprofen and and everything else to these to this day now right now it's i don't know which date it is but it's june 22nd 23rd ish 2024 where do you want to see the company on june 23rd 2025 Ours? Yes. Yes. We want to be, we want to be open and, and having a good time and hanging out and helping, helping other people for whatever they need Kava and Kratom for. That makes sense. And now when you drink Kratom, do you add flavor to it or do you drink it like without flavor? Uh, it's, it's a personal choice. I do it with, with uh, what I like to do. Yeah. Um, depends on who makes it too. Sometimes True. you can have it natural and I don't even need the flavoring. So it all depends on who may, who's making it. Now, what do you think about kava? Do you love it? Personally, I'm not a I'm not a kava drinker. I'm strictly kratom. So my partner here, he's the kava drinker. Yeah, kava's interesting because I one of my favorite things about coming to kava bars is seeing people that have no idea what kava is, and then seeing like a bartender explain that it's from the Fiji Islands and whatnot, and then seeing their first face. When they drink it, they make that face. It's one, yeah. it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It, it is hilarious. I mean, I, I am I am a big Kava fan. And, um, you know, as you alluded to, it did come from Polynesia. They've been using it for thousands of years down there um, in, in lieu. It, so Kava is really kind of a root. Uh, Kratom, you know, is is actually a, a tree. And, um, you know, they, they, they come from – they do different things. Um, kava gives you kind of more of a benzodiazepine effect, a little bit more of a, you know, anti-anxiety kind of, uh, you know, just kind of a lubrication of, uh, you know, uh, public speaking and things like that. It's just really kind of a nice mellow deal. Um, and the only problem with kava that I found is what you just said. It's the taste. It's, it tastes like it's a root. It comes from the dirt. See, That's what it I, tastes like. I like the taste. You like the taste. It doesn't bother me. Okay. <laughs> When um when you go to like the chill room and Frank the Kava OG makes it yeah it's really good but if you go to other places where it's just some kid making it it's, yeah if it's really watery it's so bad no no that's a great point and and, and in fact more more Kava than kratom in fact uh, Kava is an art making Kava is an art and Frank Frank is amazing at that I'll I'll, I'll tell you that but um, at Strange Clouds we have definitely perfected our our Kava game as well it's something that we uh, that I'm very very passionate about and something that I want to start you know, uh, pushing a little bit more, um, you know, it's a little bit more of a kind of a bar type scene with, with respect to like mixed drinks and things, all alcohol free, of course, Yeah. but with, uh, you know, Kava and Kava extracts. Um, so yeah, there, there is just a huge, a huge movement today in the United States, not just the United States, but globally of folks just getting tired of alcohol. You hear sober experiences all the time online. Um, you're starting to see things creep into, you know, Facebook feeds and things like that about, um, alternatives to alcohol that, that, um, that still kind of give you that social lubrication you're looking for, but, um, don't have the side of just the horrible side effects of alcohol. What's annoying is if you make a post about Kava or Kratom, it gets shadow banned because Facebook puts some community standards thing. Yes. Yeah. The K word is definitely problematic some, in some places. And, you know, that's one of the stigmas that we're trying to break here. Yeah. Um, you know, South Florida specifically has – is it, they call it the mecca of, of Kava and Kratom because it is extremely popular down here. But even down here – you know, less about less than half of you, you go you go walk around and talk to people. You know, um, have you heard of Kava and Kratom? About half will say that they have. You leave the state and you're down around maybe five or ten percent. The further you get away from here, it is still an untapped and resource. If, if you say it, it's always bad. If you leave, yes. If, if you leave Florida and you yes. bring it up to people and they Google it, yes. I'm telling you right now, don't Google Kava and Kratom to anybody listening because it's all lies. It absolutely is. And I'd like to kind of address that just a little bit Please. because, um, you know, the articles that have, that have been written on it talking about overdoses and things like that, there are a lot of asterisks, so to speak, with those articles. Yes. There, there are um, a lot of the people that, quote unquote, overdosed, had more than one chemical in their system, likely opiates as well. So to be able to just blame it on Kava and Kratom is really a misnomer and it's, it's disingenuous. Every article, it'll end with, well... They also had ecstasy in their body, and they also had heroin in their body. Right. Know? 
So I, what I wanted to say um, about regulation, and, and, and we want more study, we want more regulation. I, I've been in the healthcare industry for, for quite some time, and I want to know if there is a problem with somebody, if, if somebody's taking a blood pressure medication or somebody's taking a diabetes medication. I'd want to know if there is some kind of side effect or if there's some kind of, um, some kind of contraindication um, that I would be able to warn my customers about. This is something that I want. I, we want the responsible ones. We want regulation. I agree. And, and, and that is something that uh, one thing that you, you hear about all the time is that it's the Wild West is unregulated. Well, that is really not you know the fault of responsible ownership. The fault of that is the government not really delving into this product very well and just using a blanket, you know, uh, a, not, I don't want to say a ban, but just just kind of a blanket negativity when it comes to carbon credit instead of studying it, really understanding how it, how it can be used beneficially for a lot of people like me that were addicted to alcohol. There are anecdotal evidence that people addicted to opiates have been helped by kava and kratom. And then, as as my business partner just said, yeah. uh, pain management. Th these are huge issues. I think there needs to be a happy medium where kava bars and kratom bars say, hey, do you have this or this or this? You probably shouldn't drink it. And then I think there should be regulations by the government where they're more chill about it. Absolutely. I feel like it's too much of the Wild West right now, but I almost feel like it's better at being in the Wild West because I don't like thinking about the government regulating it. Right. Because once I don't know a lot about how the government and money works, but I feel like if the government were to be able to have more access to it, the media would be nicer to create them. I think it's because you literally one time, for example, I say clonopin for my ADHD. Sure. And I was out of clonopin and it was going to take two days to get it. I took some green kratom and kava. Uh huh. Same effect. Same effect. Not quite the same. Right. Because I try not to drink too much Kratom. But literally, I was able to get through the day. That's terrific. I mean, that's the, these are these, same this, as an opioid. Absolutely, absolutely. And th these are these are the reasons why I am so passionate about this product is because so many people are addicted to opioids and, and alcohol and these things. We know we know one hundred percent. Just look at you know the DUI rates. Look at how many people alcohol kills every single year. We don't have any, even in the worst case scenario of some of the studies that, or the quote unquote studies that you read about with Cobb and Kratom, the negative portion of that doesn't even come close to where alcohol is. Not even close. And what I think is fascinating too is the people you meet at Cobb and Bars. I have met so many of my friends and so many mentors and connections and sponsors at Cobb Bars. I go to a normal bar. I just meet drunk people that don't want to talk. But you can meet somebody who's recovering. You can meet a millionaire. You can meet a former NFL player. That's what I think is so beautiful about the Kava and Kratom community is you never know who you're going to meet. I think one of the things, too, is that it's it's not just the type of people, but the age range. A lot of people, because vaping, for the most part, is more of a younger generation kind of thing. And you kind of fall in line thinking that Kava and Kratom is as well. But you'd be amazed at... The amount of people, young and old, I mean, of all ages, are, are into Kava and Kratom for various reasons. How long have you been drinking Kratom? Uh, it's uh, probably about seven years now. Oh, wow. I, I'm around 2018. Uh, it's about about seven years, but I wasn't really an everyday use user until about maybe three, four years ago. You know, it was just a sporadic thing for me because, like I said, it just took me a little time to get off the pills and to stop using it. And... And really just use this as a real effective means to get off, you know, for pain management. Pills make me nervous because I've been taking pills since I was five because I was a really hyper kid. My grandpa died in 98 and I was five years old and I was like throwing a chair in the house because I was so mad because my grandpa was my best friend who lived with my mom and my uh, dad for the last year and a half of his life. And I spent every second with my grandpa. And then I went through like this almost like five year old crisis where I'm like, how can my best friend be gone? So my mom was panicking, and she, I don't want to say my mom got exploited. That sounds bad. But all the pathetic doctors in the 90s were like, here's lithium, here's Wellbutrin. They literally used me as a test rat since 98, and I take clonopin and Lamictal for my ADHD and bipolar, and I'm fine with that. But I'm telling you, man, I don't really remember the last 20 – I don't remember from 99 to about – 2008 because i was on so many meds that it's just a blur and that to me 
a lot of people talk about meds and they go, oh, it's good or whatever. There are some bad side effects to taking meds. I mean, part of that is the doctor's fault. And I, I, I don't care what you're taking medication for, you know, ADHD, yeah. diabetes or whatever. But if you go to your doctor with any given problem, the first thing you're going to want to do is write, a, write you a script. Of course. That's the first thing they do. Instead of seeking, you know, healthy, you know... Even if you're overweight, instead of instead of you know working through you on 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 your diet and nutrition and better ways to eat, the first thing they want to do is give you pills for it. Oh, zumping. So, I mean, it, you know, pain management is the same thing. You go to your doctor for that. The first thing they want to do is give you an oxy script. Yeah. So, it really is crazy because I just remember I was like five years old sitting in these chairs, and it was almost like my parents didn't know what to do. So you try to believe the doctor, you know, you try to believe like that what they're doing is what they're doing is good, but I don't know. Nineties was different. I don't think five year olds are getting meds anymore. Yeah, no, that, that's a great that's a great point. I mean the the, phar- the pharmaceutical industry has has just gotten you know, out of control with the amount of medication that they're throwing at juveniles and, you know, children under 18. I mean, you know, that, that could, we could fill up a whole other two hours with that I know. for sure. Craziest thing. The best med I ever took was lithium in second grade. I uh-huh. was getting straight A's. I was reading book after book, but I was wetting my bed every night. Really? And uh, my mom almost wanted me to begin wearing diapers because I was so good in school. Right. But I was never the same since then. And we had to get me off of it. Wow. And then Ambien, I had a psychotic breakdown on Ambien. I had a Simpsons poster in my room, and I thought Homer Simpson was talking to me. No kidding. I literally was watching Futurama with my dad in the living room, and I thought Bender and Fry and all the characters on the show were talking to me, and I went to lay down. Right. Ambien, don't take Ambien. Just take a, just take a sleeping gummy. Ambien's bad. Well, and, 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 you know, if it's happened to you, it's probably happened to hundreds of thousands of people. You it know? was scary. Yeah. I literally was tripping. <laughs> that's, that's just, yeah, it's just not cool. I mean, as it, it, there, there are alternative. Now, look, I, I can't say, you know, that a cover kratom treats or diagnoses any disease. You oh, know, of course not. Yeah. But I can say what it's done for me. And what it's done for me is that it is, it has absolutely helped me get off alcohol. It's helped me lose weight. Um, that loss of weight is, has helped my cholesterol. That's helped my blood sugar. That's helped, you know, a slew of issues, uh, be, just because, and you, and you brought up the, um, the appetite suppressant, um, effects that it has for you, yeah. uh, you know, just on your own. And, and honestly, I've, I've had the same type of effect as well. So, you know, uh, I, I, the bottom line is I'd like to see more study, but I can tell you empirically just from what I've experienced, what I've seen many, many other people experience is, is harm reduction. That's really what it is. Is is anything 100% safe? No, nothing's 100% safe. Not. You can overdose on water. Literally, you can drink yeah, enough yeah. water and you can overdose on it, okay? Yeah. So the whole overdose, you know, uh excuse just doesn't hold it, it doesn't hold water, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it just it does it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's all about the the concentration of of the chemical in your blood. So, yes, uh you know, nothing is 100% safe, but what vape kava Kratom, these things are are harm reduction. The, these things aren't 100% safe, but they they are absolutely re, re, you know reducing the possibility of harm um, that is caused by the analogs of alcohol, uh, tobacco, and 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 so forth. So you know, while nothing is totally safe, I'm a big believer in harm reduction, and I I know for a fact from my own numbers, I'm better off today. Than when I started drinking kava and kratom. Oh yeah, and um, I, I really want to share that with as many people as possible to to really try to um, to to help. And not only that, but you know, pharmaceutical uh, you know pharmaceutical solutions for this type of stuff. These things aren't cheap. You know, uh, healthcare in this country is extremely expensive, and you know, uh, kava and kratom is an order of magnitude in terms of your pocketbook. Um, you know, better uh, from that perspective. So. You know, uh, I don't want people to stop taking their medications. Please do what your doctors tell you to do. But certainly take a look at some alternatives that might be able to help you. Now, how can people find you guys online and in person? So you can find us online. Uh, uh, you can Facebook us. Uh, we're, we're at Strange Clouds with a Z. So it's uh, Strange Clouds with a Z. You can find us on, on X. You can find us on Facebook. 
uh, strangedowlclouds.com. You can find us on. And uh, there are there are other things that we're going to be doing. Our grand our grand opening is going to be coming up here pretty soon, so we're going to have you know uh, a, a marketing push there. So you're going to start seeing uh, strange clouds, nice. you know, more and more. Uh, you know, shout out to to Justin and and uh, all those Demarco and all those guys up at uh, Palm Harbor. You know, Tony, Dylan, Kane. Uh, they, these these are just really wonderful people. And the biggest thing that you're going to see, and I've been to uh, over a dozen Cabo Kratom bars, you know as a part of my research to figure out how to get into this business, the difference that you'll find at strange clouds is the people, the worker, the people that work there are passionate about the product. Yeah. They really are passionate about the brand. And, uh, we have some of the lowest turnover rate that you're going to see because we only hire people that are, you know, our partners with us on our mission. And that really shows at strange clouds. And I haven't been there yet, but I'm definitely picking up the vibe that it's not going to be like high school drama. Cause you go to some Kava bars, and my goodness, it's like you're in high school again. Oh boy, yeah. The worst. Yeah, you see that. I, I see that quite often, and and it's really it's really kind of a turn off for me because a lot of times you'll hear about the Kava community, quote unquote. Yeah. And that Kava community for me uh, is is painted with too broad a brush. It's you know people automatically think of Gen Zers that are you know just hanging around and 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 just you know doing whatever they're doing as part of their as part of what their generation's next big thing is. That's really not what we're going for at Strange Clouds. We don't want just, I mean, we, of course we want Gen Zers, but I want, you know, the older uh, uh, faction of people too. There's a lot of pain um, in, in getting old. Trust me, I'm starting to learn this myself. And, you know, if we can help with pain management, especially here in Florida with, uh, with the senior population that we have, and we could break through some of these stigmas that are, are completely unfair um, I, I, I really think a lot more people can, can be helped, and, and Strange Clouds is a great place to start. Well, Richard and Rich, it's been a lot of fun having you on the show. Can you believe it's been 32 minutes and 20 seconds? That is uh, hard to believe. It's it, The time has flown by. I could talk about this subject for a long, long time. I really love it. What I should do, right now we're recording at the chill room of Pinellas Park, but I definitely want to bring the equipment and broadcast live from your shop. Oh, you are absolutely welcome. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of Hoppy Hour. I appreciate that. I, I, I absolutely love it, and, uh, you know, from the first time I've heard it, and you know, I we've talked about this before. Um, you know, you're one of the people that I've met at a Kava Kratom bar. I know, it's and crazy. and uh, you know, this is exactly what we're talking about about just the type Networking. of folks that you meet. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, I we'd love to have you uh, have you over, man. We'll take All care right. of you. Keep up the good work. Thanks, guys. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happyradio.com. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Goodbye.